After two years of anticipation, firearms have finally arrived at Dying Light 2. Despite being the most requested feature from the community, Techland took their time and added this crucial gameplay mechanic that was previously present in the first game this late to the game. While the guns changed the way we play Dying Light 2 forever, Techland did its best to make the fundamentals ready for this groundbreaking feature of the game. But sadly, there are some missteps that are currently hampering the overall experience. Let me explain that. Prior to the release of Dying Light 2, Techland announced that there would be no firearms in the game, which was devastating news, considering it's a zombie game and guns were an important part of the original Dying Light. The studio justified the lack of firearms by claiming that the world of Dying Light has entered a new dark age and that all weapons were either destroyed or rusted away. On top of that, there's no one around with the knowledge of creating new guns. So for the next two years, there were no firearms in the game and players had to fight enemies with whatever scrap and legendary weapons they would come across. However, while playing the game, there were signs of weapons being stashed somewhere hidden from public access with only one problem, and that is, nobody knows the exact location of this weapon stash. Deep down, most of the fans felt that the firearms were just a piece of cut content and nobody knew the real reason behind their absence. Fast forward now and we finally got the first taste of the firearms, but how they impact the gameplay and how did Techland execute the whole concept? The best thing about the guns update is that the developers tried their best to fix the game's shortcomings by giving players what they deserve. As a result, you get to experience a fleshed out narrative about the recovery of the firearms and their impact on the people of Willador. You will also get to know about a new group of human survivors who want to create their own version of Paradise on Earth using these weapons. During this action-packed scenario, you get to meet new characters including Jay, a new vendor in the game that will finally supply you with firearms and ammunition. Jay offers multiple different classes of firearms including pistols, SMGs, shotguns, rifles, and their ammunition. However, the first and biggest problem with the update is the way you're supposed to earn these guns. By completing survivor missions for Jay, you earn tokens, similar to what we've seen with previous endgame vendors. And by using these tokens, you get to buy weapons and ammo. However, the missions are too grindy and reminiscent of MMO games. Simply put, you have to do too much and spend a massive amount of time to earn so little unless you're willing to use different methods that are available across the internet to speed things up. Guns currently don't degrade, so you don't have to worry about losing them. Besides, you can always earn more tokens and buy more firearms from Jay. As was the case with every other weapon in the game, guns have different tiers as well, with the golden tier being the most broken one. This is due to the balancing issue which I will get into in a moment. But before that, tell me how do you feel about the guns their impact on the game and Techland's implementation of this new mechanic in the comment section. The addition of guns created more variety in the game and thanks to them, a new combat meta has a reason that makes the gameplay pace much faster than before. Depending on your game's difficulty setting and Aiden's skill levels, firearms could drastically affect your experience. This means if you have upgraded Aiden to higher levels of endgame, there will be no difference between shooting an enemy either to the head or the toe. Either shot would insta-kill that enemy regardless, which is not something you'd expect from a shooter. Now, the problem with the golden tier weapons arises the moment you figure out that they're no different than their previous iterations. You might have spent hours grinding tokens to earn these pretty and shiny new toys, but they aren't any different compared to what you were using before. This becomes a major concern once you use a common tier weapon with a maxed out Aiden and find out that there's basically no difference between weapon tiers at all in most of the scenarios. It's clear that there's a major balancing issue regarding the guns, and while it's obvious that Techland will fix the problem, they can always respect Aiden's skills, I wish there were more ironed out at the time of the update's release. Although to Techland's credit, they had to implement a game-changing mechanic to Dying Light 2 that would not only affect the entire game from the beginning to the end, but the story as well. So seeing them caring for the game and adding new and important stuff to it is actually incredible. Also, it's worth noting that earning guns is not possible until reaching the fisheye for the first time. This might have been implemented to prevent the game from getting too easy for the players from a get-go, especially since it's not possible to abuse the save system to drop weapons for your friends and earn them back by reloading an older save file. Another odd choice that has been made here is the amount of ammo Aiden can carry which is surprisingly low and there are no skills or crafting options to increase it. Therefore you either have to grind for tokens and buy more ammo from Jay constantly or loot them from previously scattered military crates 
or sometimes on the zombies' corpses. While it's nothing special and is more like missing attention to detail, it feels bizarre that the once every gun and ammo was taken off the street narrative has changed and suddenly only now does Aiden recognize those ammos and can find them more regularly in the loots. I get the gameplay reason why it was implemented this way, but I wish Teclan added new looting options specifically for the guns. By the way, while it's totally possible to justify this thing by saying Aiden basically didn't care about bullets because they were useless to him, it's worth noting that everything in the post-apocalyptic world of Dying Light has its use case, even something like the old world money. Also, my second biggest disappointment with the update is the fact that it's impossible to parkour and use guns at the same time. While basic things such as sprinting had their special skills option to learn in the base game, which I have talked about in another video, I expect that Teclan to follow their own footsteps and add a new skill option specifically for the parkour and shooting. It's still possible to jump or slide and enter slow motion mode while shooting with a gun similar to using a bow and arrow, but I was expecting something more, like running on the wall horizontally and mowing down zombies with SMG. Dying Light 2 Reloaded Edition is what we should have gotten in the first place two years ago. It comes with lots of changes such as improved graphics and lighting, new cutscenes, enhanced parkour, and most importantly, firearms. While the implementation of this optic leaves a lot to be desired, especially with the massive amount of grind you need to do to earn advanced weapons and how broken weapons balancing currently is, the fact that Techland managed to pull this massive change to the core gameplay is admirable. A new combat meta has been born thanks to the firearms, and the gameplay pace is much faster now. Some things are missing from the game, such as more looting options for the ammunition and parkour and shooting at the same time, but I hope Techland addresses them in the future. But I think this update is the best the game has received yet, and I can't wait to see what they have in store with the second expansion of the game. Also, if you want to learn more about Dying Light 2's parkour system, take a look at this video.